five minute tutorial on how to use ICID 3D. And in this example, we're going to render a simple scene of a chessboard. And we're going to first see it through a pinhole and then render it with a fisheye lens. And uh, to run this, in addition to ICID 3D, uh, I'm going to be using ICID CAM, but we could be using ICID Bio. Uh, and also, we need uh, some JSON IO capabilities. Uh, the PBRT that we run is installed on a Docker container, so you need to have Docker installed on your system. And uh, of course, you'll need the data for the uh, particular scene, which is a chess set, which we normally put in ISET 3D in the data part under version 3 of PBRT. So when we get started, we initialize ISET. Uh, IE refers to ISET functions. That's how we, uh, that's the namespace we use. And then we're going to check that we have Docker installed and properly configured uh, on this system. Uh, then we're going to go read the scene. This uh, reads a recipe, we call it. And PI, P-I, uh, is the prefix for most of the functions that we use inside of ISET 3D. We used to call it PBRT to ISET, but uh, so the shortening is PI. So we now go read the scene, and that has produced for us here a something we call a recipe. The recipe is it's an object in MATLAB. It's a class that we uh, where we store all the relevant information about the scene that we're going to render, where the inputs are, we're going to write the outputs, things of this sort, and uh, most of our interactions for controlling uh, the rendering are, are by adjusting the parameters through sets and gets of this uh, particular of this particular. Uh, scene in this case. So um, we're going to render it now, and now we're rendering it. You can see down here that we ran uh, the Docker container, and it went loaded up the scene, and uh, it executed, and uh, we just put in a very rough, low quality. You can see all the rendering noise here. We put in a rough, rough low quality set of parameters, so we just get a quick look at the scene and be sure that we're happy at the position of the pinhole and so forth, and, and uh, that looks okay. Uh, and all it took was to read it. Uh, we didn't do anything to it, just wrote it back out. We rendered it, we got the root spectral radiance back, and then we brought up the scene. Now we're gonna uh, change the resolution a little bit just to give you a sense that we can set various parameters. We're gonna add a, um, a pixel samples as the number of rays uh, per pixel that we cast. Uh, we are gonna get this lens and attach it to the camera set the focal distance, figure out how big the film is in millimeters, things of this sort, set the aperture, just like you'd be shooting a particular scene. So we've now changed it. We're now gonna write it out and render it. And so we've now started a new run of the Docker container with the updated parameters. And what's gonna come back this time, last time remember it was called a scene, this time we call it an optical image because it's no longer through a pinhole, but it's actually through, which is like looking at the scene itself, but it's through the, um, through the lens. And because we have the lens, now we, it looks different. The lens, it's a fisheye lens, and it's changed the scene a little bit. And you can see that um, we now have it with the distortions, the lights, and so forth. And so that's a uh, the way you can render scenes. And just to review once again, we initialized, we read in the scene. Uh, when we read it, and this time we didn't change it, so we just wrote it out directly. We rendered it, we visualized it. We then started changing the parameters of the scene uh, create by creating a camera instead of a pinhole, setting some of the focal distances and so forth. Uh, we wrote it back out, we rendered it again, and we had a look at it.